If you could, could you get out your math book for me? That's what we're, we're only working in our math book today for math. It's page 37. Wait, what's math book? No, I don't. Uh, it's lesson worksheet 37. This is what it looks like. Okay, lesson worksheet 37. This is it right here. Just 37, no A or B today. Oh, I got isn't here. You push all the way down and I don't Have the pavement solution. Okay. Uh, spelling. So that's going to be 9.30. All right, so this page is just a review of the plus one facts that we were kind of introduced to on uh, yesterday. We kind of started them. So that's all we're doing in math today. I just want to work this page together. Everything else, your work page is all review. Okay, so let's start with zero plus one. Dennis, can you give us the answer? Zero plus one is? One. One, good. Next one is one plus one. Avaya, what's that answer? Two. Two. Joshua, you have the page? Yeah, yeah, you're on mute. I can't. Uh, two plus one. Well, we just finished. One plus one is two. You have it, okay. So the next one is two plus one. Joshua is what's the answer? Three. Three. Awesome. Two plus one is three. Next we have three plus one. Naraya. Four. Four. Three plus one is four. Faith, four plus one. Five. Five. Four plus one is five. Okay, next one. Are you caught up? Five plus one, Kinley. Six. six. Five plus one is six. Taitlin, six plus one. Six plus one, so I have seven. Six. seven. six plus one is seven. Okay, back to you, Dennis. Seven plus one is eight. Eight. Good. Avaya. Eight plus one is eight plus one is nine. Nine. Nine plus one, Joshua. Ten. Ten. Nine plus one is ten. Naraya, to you. Ten plus one. Okay. 11, and then our last one, Faith, what's 100 plus one? So I have 100, and then I just add one more. So that's 100 and? Two. Mm -mm, one more. 100 and? One. One. 101. So 100 plus one is 101. We're just adding one more. So go ahead and fill them in, and then we'll save them all together. Bring that. Two plus one is four. 
Mm -hmm. uh, ooh, uh. All right, let's go over them all together on A side. Let's start with zero plus one on three. One, two, three. Zero, zero plus one equals one, one, one. One plus one equals two, two, two. Two plus one equals three. Four plus one equals five. Five, five. five plus one equals six, six, six. Six plus one equals seven, seven, seven. Seven plus one equals eight, eight, eight. A plus one equals nine, nine, nine. Nine plus one equals ten, ten, ten. Ten plus one equals eleven, eleven, eleven. And a hundred plus one equals one hundred and one. All right, good. So look, let's look at the other side. Let me see. So on the other side, I'll give you about two minutes to kind of work on that. So what you're going to do is look at the facts. So the first one is three plus one. Whatever the answer is, you draw a line from that fact to whatever the answer is. So three plus one is four. So I would draw a line from three plus one and go all the way to four. See that? Okay, you can do that. I'll give 922. I'll give you until 925 to kind of finish that. If you finish before, just show it to me on the screen. Done this solution. Okay. Can you see it? Yep. Good. And then it's two jeans. Okay. Can you show it to me? Just so I can see that you have two jeans. Okay, I see. Good, Dennis. Uh-oh. 
Okay. Is everyone almost done? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So good. So this is our math adding plus one. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's it for math. You can go ahead and get out a list of paper for writing. Yes. Okay. But what about you? You have to tell me who just uh, he's going to get some voice. Just reviewing some of the rules that we already kind of know. This is a review week this week. Okay, so let's look at the sentences here. Okay. Fix the glare. Okay. So number one says Peter and John love Jesus. A lot of proper nouns in here. Peter and John love Jesus. Go ahead and write this one correctly. Look at your proper nouns. We're not going to tell you where they are. You have to listen for them. Peter and John love Jesus. Okay, mommy. H how do you make a capital P? Yes. Okay. What is it? Hmm? One, one on the stick, or are you supposed to do? Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Can you write a capital P? Okay. Like this. And curve goes straight down. Like that. Okay. No, it does not. Yes. And capital P does not connect, Avaya. Okay. I didn't make it connect. Okay. Because it's connect. too big. Yeah. And there's no connector.
I can't see. Oh, sorry. In the way. Done is fluid. Okay. Let's go over number one. All right, Kinley, walk us through number one. Capitalized P. First letter P should always be capitalized. What's next? And capitalized the J. J and John. That was another name. Another name. Sorry, proper noun. And capitalized the other J. J and Jesus. I hope you did all of that and finish with the good. Who did all of that? You capitalized all three names. I did. I did it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Number two. My dad gave me a ball. My dad gave me a ball. Mm, just tomorrow. I say it right in four times today. Oh. I have to make these. I have to make. Huh? Yeah, loose leaf. Yes, uh, that's what I was saying um, the other day, yesterday. Let's go ahead and go for number two. Anybody like to do number two for us? Can I do it? Go ahead, Avaya. So capitalize the Y. Well, my M? Yes, the M. Capitalize M. Mm-hmm. And it was a period. And a period. This one was very easy. Only capital letter and period. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, number three, Josh put gas at Shell. Now, remember, Shell is the name of a gas station. Yeah. So when you write Shell, be careful. Josh put gas at Shell. Oh, I know. We had discussed that. Oh, 
Miss Luigi. Yes. I capitalize my S. Okay. Write your sentence. You didn't capitalize your first letter. Okay. Didn't I just ask you to stop doing that? Number three, go ahead, Naraya. Capitalize the J. First letter J and Josh. And capitalize the S and A. S and Shell. And put a period. And period. Did you do that? Yes. Okay. All right, so do a number four. Uh -huh. Put a number four. Number four, because you have to do that. Okay, so could you create your own sentence and with a proper noun? So it can be the proper noun of a person or the proper noun of a place. Your own sentence that you make up. So remember, you have to have a who and a what. So who in the sentence and what they are doing. Just make sure you have a proper noun in there. Mm -hmm. Can you do first and last name too? First and last name. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Miss Lugin, can I tell you about my sentence? Yes, we will. I just want to make sure everybody's complete before we start to share. But yes, we will. Have you seen the new movie, Chan Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings yet? I haven't. 
I watched it and it was good. Oh, really? Yes. Cool. Cool. He, he has the 10 rings at the end and he, and he, and he destroyed a, a soul sucking monster. Well, you told me the movie. You know, you played you the end. That's my own sentence. Via will go to the ship. That's the gas, gas station. See? Okay, let's share our sentences. All right, Naraya, go ahead. Naraya and Dad will go to McDonald's. Naraya and Dad will go to McDonald's. Good, she had two rubber downs in there. Good. Faith? Sarah went to the mall. Sarah went to the mall. Sarah is her proper <laughs> noun. Good, Kinley? Lily went to Starbucks and the worker's name is Lily Brown. Lily, you said? Okay, yeah. so she had Lily Brown and Starbucks. Good. Okay, take Lynn. Tom and Carly went to the store with Mina. Okay, good. Why you want to get Tom? Can I go? Yes, go ahead, Avaya. Avaya will go to Shell and wait. I'm not ready yet. Okay, Dennis. <coughs> You're not ready yet either. Okay, Joshua. You have your sentence. Joshua. Collins, A, KFC. Good. KFC and Joshua Collins, proper noun. Awesome. Okay, you ready now, Vayar Dennis? I'm not ready. Not yet, still? Okay. I'm ready, Miss Lugins. Okay. A vial will go to Shell and go to Toys R Us. Awesome. So Shell and Toys R Us. So you have to go put gas before you go, right? Yep. All right. Dennis, you ready yet? Not yet? Okay, I'll give you like 30 more seconds. Miss Flugin, I have to go to the restroom. Okay. Oh, for Mr. Michelle, I can't wait for her to respond. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sheena Nair. Okay, go ahead, Dennis. Dennis, put the place in the bin. I'm sorry, Dennis, go again. I had to step away for a second. Read it again, I'm sorry. Dennis, put the toys in the bin. All right, awesome. Good job, Dennis. What's the proper noun? Good. Awesome. So that's all we will have to do on the test on Thursday is correct sentences. That's it. What's the proper nouns and you create your own, okay? Let's go ahead and get out your reading. Tip to, um, yeah, tiptoes. Let's say the other book. Okay. Okay. Which page are we on? Know what I'm ready for? Page, page 305. 305? Yeah. Does your book go that far? Uh, let me see. Well, 305. It goes as same as far as yours. I have it. I think you should have it. Huh? 103? No, 305. Ooh, that's 300. Mm -hmm. So let me know when you find it, okay? Okay, it's going to take a while. Can you show yeah. me what that page looks like? 305, guys. Can you show me what the page looks like? Um, looks like this. <laughs> so it's the boy with the dog? Mm -hmm. Well... I see no boy with the dog. Yeah, until. Well, page on the two. Has... I'm sorry, say that again. Page 305. Uh huh. I'm kidding, guys. There's no 305 in our book. <laughs> no 305. I'm kidding. Page 39 today. That's where we are. But I'm happy that you were really gonna look for it. But now 305. Miss Williams is kidding. Yeah, we don't. None of our books have that many pages. Thirty-nine. What? Uh, Thirty-nine. Ham, eggs, and toast. There's no, I, 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 I can say like, well, there's no 300 in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I knew you were going to trick us, but you I know asked what I wanted to make you think I fell for it. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. 39. Ham, eggs, and toast. Can I read it? Yes. Okay. Let me hold on. We're still in here trying to. Come on, guys. 39. I'm on the page. I'm on 39. Ham, eggs, and toast. Ham, eggs, and toast. Yeah. Ham, I went to four. Mm hmm. Yes. That's it. You had a question or no? Uh, I forgot it. Okay. Well, if it comes back to you, let me know. Oh, I remember it. Have okay. you ever played the piano? I have not. I'm, I'm, I'm playing eight notes. Oh, cool. That's really well. Maybe one of your show and tell, you can do that one day for us. Yeah, we got a piano. My piano's over there in my hallway. Oh, oh yeah? We got well, pinata. Well, you have a pinata, Dennis? We already okay. cracked it. Oh, we okay. That was probably for your sister's birthday? Yes. Yeah, awesome. Okay, but let's keep, let's go to our, let's stick to our lesson. Okay, so page 39, ham, eggs, and toast. If I, you can start us off and I'll tell you where to okay. stop. Stain. Look at like your eggs. Ham, eggs, and toast. Look at the huh? A, F. Stab. Mm -hmm. Right. Stab. Like ham, eggs, and toast. 
in phase. Look at your vowel A. Fa in fast. Wait, fact. that's a C T. Is yeah, that the fact? Fact. fact. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is the male he likes best. Okay. Keep going. Please fix ham, eggs, and toast, Mom. Stan said to his mom one day, his Good. mom has a big ring. Awesome. Okay, so we're introduced to Stan. What is his favorite food to eat? Toast. Ham, eggs, and toast. Ham, eggs, and toast, right? And so who fixes that for him? Mom. His mom, right? And so every time his mom asks him, what does he want? What does he say? Ham, eggs, and toast. Must be good. Okay, page 40. Come on, page. Do you see what I see? Mom says Stan went to his seat. Yes, Stan says, I see my plate. It has ham, eggs, and toast on it. Stan said his in his seat says, I have the best mom who he said. Awesome. Okay, so mom fixed him a meal and she fixed his, fixed his favorite meal, which were ham, eggs, and toast. Was Stan excited and happy about that meal? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he was. That was his favorite thing to eat, so he was very happy about that. <laughs> So that's Stan's favorite meal. Okay, let's look at 41. Looking at FR and TR. Okay, go ahead, Dennis. The next one. Do you see what I see? Mom said. Oh, no, we just read that on 41, the box with the words. This one. Can't really hear you too well, Dennis. I can hear you a little, but it sounds far. Miss Lugins. Uh huh. I didn't want to. Do, I didn't. I didn't want to show the my me play the piano for show and tell. Okay. Yes. Okay, but let let's let Dennis read. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Dennis. Try. Try. Rose. Trod, trees, free, trade, breeze, treat. Awesome. Good. Okay, let's go to 42. Steve's cap. Steve's cap. All right. I'm going to let Taylor and then Joshua. Uh, yeah. Okay, go ahead, uh, Taylor Steve's cat. Steve's cat got on Good. So we start the story off with Steve saying, stop, Bones, stop. What does he want from Bones? His cap. His cap. Okay, Joshua, 43. I'll tell you where to stop. I will give you a big, big bone if it, you will be a big, fat, 
Wait, look at that EA. That's a long E. It will be a big C. Uh, big it will okay. be a big piece. Good. Uh, I mean, uh, I just got the cat and the bat. Okay, you can stop there. So he's telling Bones to give him back his cap. What does he tell Bones he will give him? A bone. He says, give me, a my, give, give me my cap and I'll give you a bone. And he just got that cap and, but, and bat. So, all right, let's keep going. Finish off the story. Jim. Jim. Please. Mm -mm. Jim and. Jim and I gave. gave That's an H. Hey. Okay. Have to go to a game. Please. That's O, like O, O, H, O. Please. Oh. Oh, please. Oh. Please. Oh, please, Bone. Give me my cat. Okay. So Jim had somewhere, Jim and uh, Steve had somewhere to go. Where did they have to go? To the game. To the game, right? And so. He's begging Bones to give it to him. Do you think Bones will give it to him? Yes. No, you don't think so? Some people say yes, he will. Some people said no. Yes. Yeah, so he, yeah, hopefully he does so that him and Jim, Jim aren't late for their game. Okay, awesome. So that's our reading today. Steve's cap and ham, eggs, and toast. Sit for reading, yep. All right, let's move on to phonics. On the board. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm on today. All right, let's start with chart seven. <laughs> then we'll go over our new chart, chart eight today. Chart seven. Yes. Chart eight. Chart nine. Well, Kenley already asked. And we're not on chart nine. It's the Ryan and Kenley today. Okay, let's go over chart seven. Are you ready on three? One, two, three. B R says burr, 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 and bright. D R says drr, 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 and drum. P R says purr, 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 and pray. G R says grr, 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 and grin. S M says mm, 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 and smoke. S C says and scat. S K says and skate. S P says and spade. C R says cur 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 and crab. T W says twa 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 and twins. SPL says full, 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 and slash. SPR says spur, 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 and sprain. SCR says skr, 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 and scream. SQU says squa, 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 and Carly bathroom. SN says sn, 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 and snack. SL says soul, 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 and sleep. BJ bathroom. STR says stir bathroom. Stir, stir, and stream. And SW says swap, 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 and swim. All right, let's go over our new chart. So Ms. Fulgens will say the sound first, and then I want you to say it after. 
after me. So I say it first, you say it after me, okay? You might have All right, I'll go first. THR says third, 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 and three. Your turn. THR says third, 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 and three. AR says R, 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 and stars. AR says R, 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 and stars. CH says ch, 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 in church. CH says ch, ch, ch. And church. O R says or 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 in the morning. O R says or 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 in morning. O U, please don't write on the screen. O U says ow 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 in out. O U says ow 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 in out. O W says ow 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 in owl. O W says ow 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 in owl. O W says o o o in bow. O W says o o o in bow. E R says er 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 in verse. U R says er 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 in verse. U R says er 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 in nurse. U R says er 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 in nurse. I R says er 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 in bird. I R says er 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 in bird. O I says oi 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 in coin. O I says oi oi Oy, 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 and coin. O Y says, oy, 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 and boy. O Y says, oy, 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 and boy. O O says, uh, 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 and book. O O says, uh, 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 and book. O O says, ooh, 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 and tooth. O O says, ooh, 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 and tooth. W O R says, whir, 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 and worms. W O R says, whir, 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 and worms. I G H says, I, 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 and night. I G H says, I, 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 and I. A L L says, all, 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 and ball. A L L says, all, 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 and ball. A L K says, uck, 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 and walk. A L K says, uck, 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 and walk. Good. So that's phonics chart eight. You want to start again? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and look at these words that I have here. Circle a couple of sounds. We'll go one at a time. Can we do it? Okay. All right, Naraya's going to go first. Yes. I think some of the pieces here. The orange ones are the blue. These. Circle the She's T H. She says circle T H. How do you mind? Smiley face over I. What's the word? With. With. Good. Next one, face. Here you go. Circle G R and. Mm -mm. A Y. Okay, what's the word? Gray. Gray. Next one, Kenley. Oh. Circle S K. S K. Oh yeah, how do I mark it? Good. What's the word? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Take your inventory. You're watching the clock. Next one. On the two. I'm going to science right here. What do I circle? CR and ST. How do I mark the U? What's the word? 
cross. Okay. All right. Let's go here. All right. Avaya, next word. What am I circling? This one here. Circle. S M N S H. Good. How do I mark the A? Make a happy face. Good. What's the word? The, the word is match. Good. Next one, Dennis. Unmute. Mm -hmm. Circle the TW. TW and smiley face on the I. Good. And what do I do to ST? Circle it. Awesome. What's the word? Twist. Awesome. Joshua. Oh, you're on mute. Circle. T T H and R. Remember that was a that was a new one we learned yesterday. But yes, T H R. How do I mark the E's? Do cross one, and it's three. Uh, the word is three. Okay, what's my sound? We learned this one yesterday. Uh uh. T A you said? Kind of sound. How, you can't circle C R, they're not by each other. A R says R like in stars. So we circle A R, what's the word? A R says R. Car. Car. Next one, Faith. Here, what am I circling? Okay. Circle SL, how do I mark the I? Uh, smiley face. Smiley face on I, what's the word? Flip, good. And then the last one, Kelly. Beside your bathroom. Ew. Ew, I'm in class. Just SP and O. Oh, it's a vowel that you have to mark. I don't care about the book. I don't mark the vowels. Okay, what's the word? Oh. Awesome. All right, so remember we also learned compound words on last week. A compound word is when we have two small words that we put together to make a bigger word. We're creating bigger words using these two small words. So look at this first word here. Could anybody tell me what the word is? And what are the two small words inside of it? Dennis, go ahead. What's the word? Unmute. Pan and cake. Good. Pan and cake. And when I put them together, what does it make? Pan cake. Pan cake. Awesome. Compound word. Next one. You want to tell me the, the, this one, the two small words, and what the word is? Avaya? Tugboat. Good. What are the two small words? Tug and boat. Tug and boat. Awesome. And the last one here. Okay. Take one. In. Um, What's the word? Sponge. No, this one here. Uh, uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, sun. Sun is one word. And what's the other one? Set. So what's the word together? Sunset. Sunset. Awesome. Compound words. Oops. Two small words put together to make a bigger word. All right. Awesome. Okay, so that's all I wanted to go over and find. It was a review of compound words and some special sounds and vowels. Okay, go ahead and get out your cursive letters book. Cursive letters? 
Yes, the one you write your letters in person. You mean this book? Yep, writing with phonics. I think it's a page I already did. Okay, we're on page 22. 20. Oh, it's what? Yeah, I might have to. Uh, yeah. Can I have a question? My mom is taking it out. Okay. Miss Lewis, I already did this page. Okay. Can I show you? Yes. Here you go. Yeah, put it on B side. I mean A side because we'll do some more tomorrow. Look, it's equal. You can put it in the middle like this. It's mine. Ready to do this? Mine. Mine too. Thank you. Ready? Yes. Yeah, we do it. What? How are you doing? Not a binder. Yes. Oh, A. Okay. Eden's bathroom. Here you go. Here you go, Insulgence. Put a little closer. Okay, looks good. Thank you, bye. Now together you can go in the other room. Twenty-seven to thirty. To thirty. And do the chapter checkup. All right. So letter M. So just like we did with R on yesterday, I'll show you how to write it. We'll do line one, but you'll have to complete the rest. So letter M is pretty easy, y'all. It's not hard at all. Okay. So letter M, if you look up here, it has three humps. So that's going to be the difference and something that you have to keep in mind when writing M and N in cursive. N has two humps, like N, like nest in, and M, like milk, has three humps, okay? Okay, so M starts right here on the bottom, the red line. First thing you do is curve up to the middle, stop, do your first hump, follow back up the same line, do your second hump, Go back down that same line, go back up, third hump, and then you kick it out. That's your connector to connect the two other letters, okay? Do not begin. Again, you're going to curve up. Your first hump, go back up the same line, second hump, down, back up the same line, third hump, kick it out. Okay, so can we do line one? Stay inside of your lines and make sure that you're touching the middle line. You don't want it to go above that middle line or outside of the red line. You have to stay inside of your line. Okay, you need to trade these first. That's why I have to go up, down, go back up. Don't split it like that. That's not right. You have to go back, back up the same line, back up the same line, then kick it out. Just do it the Yes. You have to do what? Do oh, I'm, no, I wasn't. Oh, okay. So I have to just do it. Okay, 
And when you're done, you can just show it to me so that I can see. I just read it. Miss Fujin. Yes, Ava, you have a question? Uh, we're almost done. Yes, we are. I was just waiting for everyone to show me. I still have someone I'm waiting on. Then we'll move on. Yes. Okay. You doing okay? Okay. All right. So good. So guys, you will go ahead and finish this page on your own, the complete page. Okay. So this is letter M. Letter M like in milk. All right. Go ahead and get out your science. Let's discuss science. We have science, social studies, language, and we'll be done. 
She doesn't really want to see these problems. She what? She wants us to not do it. Miss Lugins? Excuse me. Excuse me, Miss Lugins? Yes? Um, what page are we on? In science? Page, <clears throat> sorry, page 27. 30, no, 27, 27, 27. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about our skin this week, our last sense, which is filling. Oh. My skin the perfect. All right, my skin. So we've covered all our five senses. Well, we're going to cover them all. So we've talked about our eyes, which give us sight, our ears, which give us hearing, oh, our nose, which gives us smell, our tongue, which gives us taste. And this week, we're going to talk about our skin, which gives us feeling, or we could say touch. Okay? So my skin, the perfect covering. I like to feel cold, wet snowflakes, snowflakes on my nose. Mother was afraid I would be cold, so she put nice warm clothes on me. My hood tickles my chin. I pinch my thumb on my sled. Ouch, it hurt. All of these things I could feel, cold, cold, warm tickles, and pain. I could feel them because of my skin. So the reason why we can feel things like cold and pain and warm are because of our skin. Our skin covers our entire body. So all of us is wrapped in skin, all of our bodies. And so our skin gives us the sense of feeling. So when we feel cold, it's because the air is touching our skin. When we feel hot, it's because the heat is touching our skin. If we feel pain, that's our skin that gives us the, that helps us to know that we are in pain somewhere. So our skin covers us and it gives us the sense of touch. Let's turn the page to 28. And let's talk about how the skin warms us and cools us. So God gave our skin many wonderful jobs to do to keep you well and strong. Your skin has hundreds of thousands of tiny holes in it called pores. So we can't see the pores if we look at our skin, we can try, but you can't see the pores. Those are little, tiny, little holes all over your skin. And the pores have a job. And the job of your pores are to keep your skin, to keep your body at a certain temperature, right? So if you're outside playing, especially now, being that, you know, we're coming out of summer, going into fall, it's, it's still pretty hot outside some days. So when you're playing outside, if you ever go outside to play, if you've ever been outside to play, usually you'll start to sweat, right? You start to sweat on your forehead sometimes. Maybe your body gets a little sweaty. You'll start to sweat. Well, that's actually a good thing that's happening. Since you're playing outside and it's so hot outside, your body has to cool off. Remember, your skin regulates, meaning it keeps your body at a certain temperature. And so whenever it's very hot outside, you start to sweat because your body is cooling itself off. The pores open and sweat comes out so that the sweat cools you off. If you were outside in the heat like that and you did not start to sweat, you will get overheated. Your body will get too hot. Does anyone know what that's called when your body gets too hot? What is it called? Usually you get it when you're sick. A fever. A fever. a fever. a fever. Yes. So sometimes we run a fever. That's when you're getting too hot. The body's getting too hot. That's how your body lets you know something's wrong as well. So yes, you'll run a fever, which we don't want that to happen. If your body gets too hot, 
that's not a great thing at all for you. So whenever it's hot outside, the pores open to let sweat out. That's why we sweat, to cool us off. So we may say, oh, I'm sweating. I don't want to sweat. Well, we have to sweat. It's cooling you off. Now, the opposite of true. Now that we're into fall, we go, we're going to go into winter soon. Now it's going to start to become more cold outside. So when it's cold outside, the pores would not open to let sweat out, right? No, that wouldn't be a good thing. Instead, the pores close and they tighten so that they can keep heat inside of your body. Your body has to keep heat inside of it. When it's cold outside, the pores close so that your body can stay warm. You don't want your body to get too cold. That is not a great thing as well. Your body has to stay at a certain temperature. So when it's cool outside, the pores close so that all that, that warmth in your body can stay there. So when it's hot, the pores open to let out sweat to cool you off. When it's cold, the pores close to keep the heat in. That's how, the, that's how it works. And so your body does all this on its own. It's nothing that we think about like pores. Come on, pores, I need you to open. No, the body does it on its own. It knows when you're too hot, it knows to open the pores so that you can cool off. And when it's too cold, they know the pores know to close so that you could stay warm. So these pores know exactly what to do. And who do you think made it like that? Ah. The Lord, of course, God in all his wisdom, he made you to be like that so that the pores know how to open, when to open and when to close. Okay, let's look at 29. Let's talk about how to take care of our skin. Since it's everywhere, all over us, we have to make sure to take care of our skin. Okay, so my skin is always making new skin. If you didn't know, our skin is always making new skin all the time. So when you take a bath, have you ever, I don't know if you take baths or showers, but if you take a bath, sometimes the water's dirty when you get out sometimes, because when you wash yourself well, all that old skin is coming off. The skin is always making new skin. That is also something that the skin does on its own. Not just that, sometimes our skin gets dirty, like if we fall down, you know, but the skin, we have to make sure that if we fall down and we open our skin, meaning we cut ourselves in any type of way that we wash it with soap and warm water. And that if you know you have a bandaid, you can put a bandaid on it or anything like that. But anytime you cut your skin, always make sure to wash it and to protect it because that means your skin is open now. And we don't want any germs to get inside of it and it can cause other problems. So if you ever cut your skin, you fall down, you hurt yourself, always make sure to wash it with warm water and soap. Put a Band-Aid on if you have to. If there's any other things you need to put on it, you can. But the skin actually heals itself as well. That's another amazing thing about the skin is that it heals itself. Most, have you ever seen a cut and then you look maybe a week later and you're like, wow, the cut's gone right? The skin healed itself. Yes. The skin does that. It, it, you know, it's going to hurt maybe like the first two or three days, usually when we get a cut, but after the skin starts to grow new skin over that cut, it gets better and it heals itself. But we still have to make sure that we keep our cuts clean that we take care of our cuts so that it doesn't get germs and then get an infection or anything. Right. And so our skin is always making new skin. That's just how the Lord made it to work. So it's amazing. Okay. All right. And so on page 30, there's just a little activity about God gave me five senses. I can see, hear, smell, taste, and feel. And then there's the boy. And so it's pointing to each part of him. You see that? And so you have to put the sense that we get. So if you have a pencil, we can do that now. Okay. Not yet. Is everybody ready on that page 30? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the first one, the first box is pointing to his eye. What sense do we get from the eye? See. See, or sight. Let's say sight. We get sight. S-I-G-H-T. How to spell it is up there as well. Sight. S-I-G-H-T. We get sight from our eye. Oh, 
guys, how do you have your pencil doing? Ooh, I don't know. This guy's the site. Well, S I G H T. So I G H is a. I G. It's a special sign on chart eight. I G I G H I I I. Okay, let's look at the next picture. It's pointing to his ear. What sense do we get from the ear? Hearing. Hearing. We get hearing. So right, hearing on the second line. Hearing starts with an H. Remember the words, how to spell them are at the top, hearing. A, right there? Hearing, yes. It's, so at the top is the one with the H, hearing. Maybe exit off so that you know what you wrote already. Mm. Give me one second. Thank mm. mm. Okay, next one is pointing to his nose. What sense do we get from the nose? Smell. Smell. We can smell because of our nose. Next is pointing to our mouth. What do we get from our mouth? Taste. 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 And then the last one we have, uh, he said they're showing his skin. We get Feel. filling. Feel. It's the one we just talked about, filling. We get filling from our skin. I can't wait till we get to this one. I can't wait till we get to this one. No, I like that one. I like this one. Wait, this is Oh, that's our eyes. All right, awesome. So good. So, okay. So that's it for science, dealing with our five senses and the sense of feeling. Let's go ahead and go to social studies. Social studies, my America, page 26. My America. Mm -hmm. You mean my America in the world? Yes, social studies. Huh? What page is it again? 26. Check your seat back again. I'm on 26. Okay. Oh, I found it. Yeah, that's what I... 26. Oh, that's, that's, that's true. true. 
And here to yourself. Okay, so let's look at 26. So last week we discussed George Washington. Remember, he was elected as the first president because of the war that they had. He led the war, and because America had victory, they decided to make him the first president. Um, he was called the father of his country. So let's talk about some more people today, okay? Okay. So this man on 26 is named Paul Revere. So Paul Revere was a silversmith, meaning he made things with silver. He was also an American patriot. A patriot is someone who loves their country and wants to help it in any kind of way. When America wanted its freedom from England, Paul Revere did all he could to help. One night, he rode his horse in town to warn the people that the British, that's the people from England, they're called the British, the British army was coming. Because of Paul Revere's bravery, more people wanted to help the American army. So Paul Revere is considered a patriot. A patriot is someone who wants to, who loves their country and wants to help their country. So if you remember, America was uh, going through all of these problems with England because America wanted to be free and England had control over the colonies at that time. And so when America wanted to become free, they had the war. Remember, we talked about the war a little bit last week. They had the war. So one time the British were planning a sneak attack, which was a secret attack, right? And Paul Revere found out about it. He found out that they were on their way and that they were coming. So what Paul Revere did is he got on his horse one night and he rode his horse through town shouting, the British are coming, the British are coming to warn the people to get ready because the British were coming to attack. So Paul Revere, he's considered an American patriot because he protected the people and he prepared them for the attack that the British were coming to you know, give to the people. They were coming to attack the people. So Paul Revere got on his horse that night, rode through town and let everyone know that the British were on their way. So the people were able to get ready so that they could defend themselves against the British. So that's what Paul Revere did. He rode through town and shouted, the British are coming to warn them. That's the people from England. They're called the British people. Like we're called American because we're from America, right? So yeah, so he warned them that the British were coming. So a lot of the people were able to be prepared because of his bravery. So he is a patriot, okay? So that is Paul Revere. Let's look at 27. That's really who our lesson is on this week, Benjamin Franklin. Has anyone heard of him before? No. 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 Well, let's talk about him a little bit, okay? So Benjamin Franklin was a wise and great American. He did all he could to help America grow strong. So Benjamin Franklin and a lot of people actually at that time did not have a lot of education, meaning they did not go to school for long periods of time. Right here. They did not go to school for a long time. So see, you go all the school, you will go to school all the way until 12th grade where you graduate. And some people go to college after that. Well, with Benjamin Franklin, that was not his case. He actually stopped school really young, very young. He stopped going to school because he had to work. He had to help his family out. And that's oftentimes how it went for a lot of people at that time. They did not get a full education. They sometimes had to stop going to school pretty young. But this did not stop Benjamin Franklin from learning. He still decided that he would learn and he would grow in education. So what he did was he learned how to read well and he read a lot of books. And he worked hard to teach himself new things. When he was only 12 years old, only 12, he learned how to print books. So yeah, he was writing books at 12. That's young to write a book, right? But he did not allow, because he couldn't get all his education, he did not allow, he did not allow that to stop him from learning and growing in education. So thank the Lord that you can get a full education and go all the way until 12th grade, but we still have things to learn outside of school. But anyway, but instead he decided, even though he didn't have all the education, he still would try to learn. So at 12 years old, he started to write books, print books at 12 years old. And so he also wrote a book called Poor Richard's Almanac. And so it was just a bunch of wise sayings is what he wrote. 
So one of them was early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Then he had little strokes fell, great oaths. So these are just little sayings, little quotes that he had. So he was a very wise man. So Benjamin Franklin, so this is not on in the book, but I'm telling it to you because I'm still gonna have test questions about it, okay? So Benjamin Franklin was from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the same place that the Liberty Bell is in. That's where he's from, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And so he worked hard to make his city a nice place where he was from. As he began to, you know, grow in education and learn things, and, you know, he started to, he wanted to build his city up. So he built some things in his city. He built a fire department. He cleaned, he cleaned and paved the streets so that they would have smooth streets to ride on. He put lights on the streets, street lights, right? You know, I want to talk about street lights. He put street lights on the streets. He put a hospital, a library, and a school for higher education. So these are some of the things that Benjamin Franklin built in his hometown of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He built a fire department, a hospital, a school. He paved the streets. He put lights on the streets and he built a library. So that was a lot of good things that he gave back to his city, right? Of Philadelphia, right? He was also known as a famous scientist. So he also worked with experiments to create things. He experimented with electricity and he proved that lightning is electricity, which it is, lightning is. He also invented the lightning rod and the bifocal glasses and the Franklin stove and also so many other things that, jo that Benjamin Franklin invented. So not only was he really wise and he wrote books, but he also was a scientist that invented things like a stove and glasses, things like that. Okay, let's look at 28. Let's also talk about what Benjamin Franklin did. While our country was fighting for its freedom, Benjamin Franklin went to France many times to get help. So if you remember when we talked about the Statue of Liberty, I told you that America was friends with France. Remember they bought the Statue of Liberty? Benjamin Franklin was one of the people who created a great connection between America and France. He was one of those people. He also was one of the people that signed the Declaration of Independence, just like George Washington signed it. Benjamin Franklin was one of those who signed it as well. He also helped write the Constitution. When our leaders could not agree, he helped them settle their differences. So this is Benjamin Franklin, a wise American who was also a scientist and he helped build his city of Philadelphia up by you know, building new things there. He also helped America to create a connection with France so that France could help us out. And he signed the Declaration of Independence, okay? So you can see Benjamin Franklin on the $100 bill. Does anybody have $100? No, huh? I never have $100. No, well, maybe ask your parents to give you $100, okay? So ask them to give you $100 so that you can see Benjamin Franklin, okay? Yeah, so Benjamin Franklin is on the $100 bill. So that's where his face is on the $100 bill. Yes, Dennis? I have one hundred dollars. You have one hundred dollars. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So if you see the picture, that's Benjamin Franklin on there. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So awesome, guys. So that is social studies this week on Paul Revere, who warned the people the British were coming, and Benjamin Franklin. Awesome. All right. So before we go, last thing is pronouns. So this week, we're going to just focus on the definition. I wanted to introduce the list, but now we'll just focus on the definition this week, okay? So this is it up here on the board. Let's practice. That's all Ms. Lugis wants you to know for the test Thursday, okay? I want you to master this. So a pronoun, let's uh, repeat after me. I'm going to ask you, what is a pronoun? You say a pronoun. A pronoun is a word. In the world. Use, use in the place, in the place of, a noun. of a noun. Again, what is a pronoun? A pronoun is a word. In the word. Use, use in the place, in the place of, a noun. of a noun. Awesome. So continue to practice that so that you're ready to write it or type it on the test on Thursday. Great job, guys. So we completed all of our lessons on today. You can just finish your workbook pages and your spelling and all of that, you know, everything you normally do after our Zoom, okay? So it was great seeing you all again on today, Ms. Williams. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Bye.